I'm Michael Fisher, craft beer enthusiast and industry professional. I'm on a journey to find some people whose professions or hobbies revolve around the fermentation of malt and hops. We're going to dive into their passions and share some conversations over their favorite brews. So join me as I bring the brew to you. Welcome back to the next round of Brew to You. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, and we are here at Magic City Brewing Company in Barberton, Ohio. My guest today is author and uh, writer for the Akron Beacon Journal, Rick Arman. Before we get into the beer, right. um, maybe tell us a little bit about your kind of journey into craft beer uh, and in the writing world. I was a editor at the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle in New York newspaper doing very important things. I was the public affairs editor overseeing elections, overseeing government coverage, overseeing education reporting. And one day the features editor came over to my desk and said, uh, we'd like to start a uh, beer column and we want you to write it. He said, we hear you drink a lot. But say, we noticed you have a problem. Yeah, you keep and, showing up late. And I, <laughs> and I thought, you know, I don't drink a lot, but even back then I really enjoyed trying all different kinds of beers. And I moved back to Ohio. I grew up in Cleveland. And then I was able to write the, the travel book, Ohio Breweries, in 2011. And that featured 49 breweries. Woo, 49 of them in Ohio. And after that, I basically went to the editors and said, I'm gonna start writing about beer full time, whether it's like online in terms of a blog. And they said, do it for the paper. Sure. So I've been kind of writing a, a weekly column ever since. So tell us about the first beer you brought. Since I specialize in Ohio, I wanted to find like some beers that really mean something special to me here in Ohio. And I'm cheating a little bit with this beer. Sam Adams is made in Cincinnati, but obviously I think people think of it as a Boston beer. And back in college, and this goes back to 1987, way back when the big choices were Bud, Miller, Coors, I took a trip to Boston and visited my friend at Boston College. And he's like, try this, try this beer, Boston Lager. And you know, the little, the, the light bulb went, yeah. wait, a, wait a minute, beer can taste good. And I, and I could be wrong, but I would have to venture that this is truly the second largest brewery in Ohio. Third, you go uh, Anheuser-Busch, um, you know, the Budweiser plant in Columbus. Which is very visible, yeah, yeah. Miller Coors in Trenton, and then um, you've got Samuel Adams down in Cincinnati. The reasons people buy local as far as a concept is, you know, to support your neighbor. Uh, and this supports a lot of Ohio neighbors. Well, I, I think that for a long time, Sam Adams, you know, Boston Beer was almost embarrassed and didn't want people to know that they were made in Cincinnati and they wanted that mystique from the commercials and everything else that... But it's all coming from that like red brick building in yeah. Boston, yeah. And I think that they've lost kind of an opportunity to say they are brewed in Cincinnati, they're Cincinnati proud, because like you just said, a lot of beer right now is local. Definitely more well-known Ohio staple, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, to the heart of it all, Cleveland, Ohio. We got some Great Lakes Burning River. Great Lakes is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. It is the brewery that kind of started it all here in Ohio. It has spawned so many other breweries in terms sure. of brewmasters coming out of there. I chose, you know, Burning River mainly because as somebody who grew up in Cleveland, heard the stories of the river catching on fire, the Cuyahoga River all the time. Um, the city was constantly made fun of for that happening. And I mean, I love the fact that Great Lakes like put that moment on a beer. I have not had a Great Lakes burning river in, I can't tell you how long. And I would be honest with you, if you would have asked me prior to staring at the bottle, what style of beer is Great Lakes burning river? I probably would have said it was an IPA. 
I mean, it is very balanced. I'd say it's yeah. almost like malt forward rather than like with the hops coming through. And I think it's just the way our palates have changed over the years. If you don't hear it 10 times a year that, oh, the Great Lakes Christmas Ale, speaking of this one, oh, it was different this year, it's right. different this year. And you aren't tasting things the way you tasted them a year ago or five years ago or whenever was the last time you had it. You know, when you were a kid and you didn't like onions and now you, you put it on everything. Uh, so I think that that is an, a downplayed or underappreciated factor in your, you know, your beer experience. Moving from, so we went from Cincinnati to Cleveland, south down 77 a little bit, is Hoppin' Frog here. And uh, Boris the Crusher uh, is definitely one of their most famed beers. For I'm a huge Porter, you know, Russian Imperial, Imperial Stout fan. Um, I love beers that pour like motor oil. Yeah, drink it with a knife and a fork. I just really enjoy kind of that thickness um, when it comes to, uh, you know, a dark roasted, you know, crunchy. My re recollection of Hoppin' Frog, um, at one time, according to, is it Rate Beer, the 17th best brewery mm -hmm. in the uh, world, which I know they were uh, extremely proud of that. So Boris stands for uh, it's, it's right here on the bottle. Bodacious Oatmeal Russian Imperial Stout. Right. And there's several variants right. uh, of Boris alone, but then there's also Doris, which Doris. is the double. Which is phenomenal. Taurus. It's the triple. Right. I had the whole yeah. 12, you know, 22 ounce bottle, so I can't remember it. Right. But it, <laughs> I do recall so enjoying it. That's really good. You keep taking me back. Every I've, It's been eons since I've had any one of these three beers. Wait until you get to the last one. Right? I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> You're first and foremost an author, and so you also wrote a book. Well, yeah. It's 50 Must Try Craft Beers of Ohio. Came out at the end of uh, 2017. And I got approached by Ohio University to do a beer book kind of a follow-up to the one in 2011, Ohio Breweries. And so I put together a list of, you know, 50 like beers that I thought every Ohioan should try. So I also took a look at like the stories behind like 50 cool brewery names and also, uh, you know, profiled 10 folks in the Ohio craft beer community who are really inspirational. And finally wrapped it up with like 10 quintessential foods, Ohio foods, and paired yeah. them with a beer. You've had a really interesting perspective too, uh, versus a lot of people that you know are just beer consumers, is you've really seen and paid attention to the trend yeah. shift from the on-premise, off-premise, what the breweries are, like beer styles, uh, what's the consume? What's driving the consumer? How's the festival shifted? I mean, when you started going to festivals, every festival it was a bunch of guys looking like you and me, and that was it. Now you're seeing 22-year-old girls getting all dressed up with heels and everything on to show up at these festivals. It's a cool thing to do now. Sticking with the theme from Ohio, without reading the book, I assume perhaps a beer in the book. It is. This beer is pretty darn special. It was the first canned craft beer made in Ohio. First modern brewery to can a craft beer in Ohio. And this was the first beer off their canning line. Culturally, Southwest Ohio, Cincinnati region, Cincy Dayton, that is what the people want. Right. This is one of my favorite Ohio brewed IPAs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I really love these guys. I love this beer. Um, I think it's very special because of its place in Ohio history. I've done, um, I did a blind tasting. It was me, the Fat Heads rep, um, and the Matchery rep, and we were all together. We did blind tasting of our, at the time, session IPA, and then our IPAs, and then we all tried to do it, and we all, we didn't even get our own beers. It was sad. It was a sad day. <laughs> we're going through Columbus, south of Columbus. Yeah, this is in the book as well. It is Oil of Aphrodite. You look at, um, you know, rape beer, and there are two breweries in Ohio that are always on the top 100 breweries in the world list. Jack Yeo's and Hoppin' Frog, year after year after year. They have a thing for Underberg. Are you familiar with Underberg? Mm -mm. It's a digestif. It's okay. bitters from Germany, right. and it comes in these little bottles. It's all, it's all the rage in the in the craft hipster community. Look over here. What 
Does this does this look like hip to you? No, that's fair. Um, but you are such an integral part of the hipster community. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chocolate really comes through in the aroma, comes through, really continuing to come through in the flavor. Right. But the coffee comes through too. And again, the bourbon is nuanced. It is definitely not bourbon in your face. They, you know, make it with locally harvested black walnuts. To me, Jackie O's doesn't do anything like half-ass. Okay, so this is the, it's usually, it's the unique beer question time. Uh, we've done several. So this is what I refer to as uh, the moped beer. It's the fun to have until your friends find out. Some people call it their, their basement garbage beer. Do you want me to like um, unveil it or it do you want to taste it first? Because I have a feeling as soon as you taste it, you're gonna know what it is. Okay, well, let's taste it first. Oh, this is great. I mean, I'm just, I'm gonna guess here. Is this honey brown? You know you're I, here? I tell you, I have, um, that was, when I was in college, that was, I ran into another guy and we bonded. That was our bromance, was honey brown. We swore we were gonna get a keg of this and throw a party. <laughs> it never came together, but honey brown was the beer. You know, in a weird way, a, a guilty pleasure. I think it's just crushable. Made by the Genesee Brewery in Rochester. But this beer was, and still I think remains like incredibly popular during the summer. This was the American answer to, hey, you want some, you want beer with bigger flavors? Obviously the honey lended it to, uh, you know, on, on the sweeter character, but there definitely was a contingent of American people that had, you know, wanted to be cool. And it was like, well, all I drink is German imports and I drink this dark and whatever. Well, back in the day, this was considered craft. You know what I mean? Like, what, like going way back. So I don't know that it is still now. Yeah, I don't know how many beer dinners <laughs> Honey Brown pops up at, <laughs> but. <laughs> Well, that about wraps it up for this round of Brew to You. I want to thank Magic City Brewing for uh, letting us come out and uh, host us here today. Uh, don't forget, if you want to pick up uh, Rick's book, The uh, 50 Must Try Craft Beers of Ohio, you can find it at your local bookstore. Uh, Amazon.com is also a great place to get it. And obviously, I want to thank uh, our guest, uh, Rick Arman. Um, you'll be able to definitely find some of his things at the Akron Beacon Journal. He writes on many things, but uh, craft beer is probably his favorite thing to write about, if nothing oh, else. Definitely. So it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure. I want to thank you for coming out in a traditional uh, brew to you fashion. Uh, cheers to you, man. Cheers. Thank you. We'll see you on the next round.